Let me ask you, who do, who do you who do you side with? Do you? I side with the uh, the other schools in the uh, in the conference base because that is an unfair advantage because now you really don't have to go out and have a recruiting budget anymore. You can basically set up your camps, do it, do your one on ones on that end, and as the school the uh, network uh, broadcast your high school games, that just put a bonus to it. That put the stamp. Do you see it next year, or do you see? Do you believe it's inevitable that my Longhorns will win this? The one year moratorium on the high school sports uh, will last longer than that until they can get resolved. Because I think within the next, on well, the next meeting, uh, the NC2A at a uh, retreat is supposed to discuss a situation like that. They would prefer that you have a conference network, which like the Pac-12, the uh, Big Ten, and the uh, I think the uh, Mountain West is supposed to uh, get their own network also. Mountain West. Mr. Mountain, they have one. Yeah. And uh, the WAC is supposed to, they have a, what they call a, a What's Up, a Sports Up uh, broadcasting network. Pretty much everybody's on the line. But uh, it would be interesting how it all gets resolved because I think from right now, the one that you and I are more familiar with than anything is the uh, Big Ten because we've watched it uh, in our travels and all around the country. It's one of those, it, it, it's it's not just a filler gap. You know, games are, because you can always put ancillary games on during the day and do your uh, uh, revenue sponsoring sports, you know, at night. You know, I love watching the Big Ten Network because that's how I watch the uh, conference you know, basketball games you know, from Big Ten. Big Ten. So I, I enjoy that, and, and that's probably one of the few positives that, or one of the few reasons that I may watch the Longhorn Network is to watch some of the women's basketball games. That may be the only reason I watch that network. But uh, that that will be interesting to see. <laughs> Do you believe that? I mean, you, you say that the one tournament is going to extend more than a year. Ultimately, in game, uh, our colleague Brent pronounced Brent's last name for for Zwanerman. Yeah. Do you believe Zimmerman. that uh, the Aggies ultimately will use this as the final reason to vote and go to the SEC? They won't have to use the final reason. That will be the reason for the conference to re- d- dissolve. Okay, so now you're saying that all this great recovery that the Big 12 minus 2 gained in the past few months will soon, on the behalf soon, but ultimately blow up yeah. and the conference will dissolve. Yeah. Yes, I do. How long do you have a time table on that? Uh, it will, uh, I would say within two years. Is that two to three. And the only reason I say that is because uh, everyone will try and resolve, at least Texas will attempt to resolve the issue with the uh, remaining schools as far as revenue because that's what it'll boil down to. They'll basically have to buy their way and keld in the conference together until they can figure something out, something else out. Was was it was dissolution of the conference discussed last week immediately? Day? Yes, and um, it, it was different. The only consistent was the coaches had the same mindset. The ADs had the same mindset. The com- commissioner didn't quite uh, give a straight answer. Uh, but it was presentable in public, and you knew it basically had to boil down to uh, getting a uh, one-on-one, uh, everyone sitting down at the table as far as the presidents, because that's who's making the decision right now. You know, the ADs can say what they want to, but at the end of the day, you and I both know it, it all boils down to administration. If the president says, let's go with that, that's it, it's done. What else is on your brain? Oh, well, let's see. Um, play of the years uh, for Conference USA and the Big 12 and the WAC uh, were we'll discussed last week. Uh, uh, let me start with the Big 12, since they were early in the, uh, the uh, big dog in the show, in the big pony. Well, you might as well talk about them for as long as it exists. <laughs> We have to. We pretty much force it to. Also, uh, the, the first game out of the block, and this was the other thing. 
for, for whatever reason, Longhorn fans, you all have a lot to prove. We all, as a media, you know, love going to you all's place because of what it re- represents and how you all treat us. But let's get real. Yeah, you have not decided on a quarterback. You don't know who is going to start. You don't have a bunch of guys that understand that at UT you still have to work. That has not happened, and it didn't get put a, a point, uh, brought across to any of the media other than the folks that decided, oh, okay, we're going to give y'all a shot. No, I picked you all to finish below Baylor. That means fifth in the league. Okay, and speaking of that, I don't know I don't know about the exact ten spots. I know Oklahoma was picked Finished first, and I, no, I think they, I, I, but I think I'll swap that out. I'll, you think Aggies finished first? Yes. Man, okay, that's, that's interesting. I do know, and this made my day, that the Longhorns will pick fifth. Is that right? Yep. Behind Baylor and Tech. That just makes it warms my heart. <laughs> <laughs> we used to get a lot of response. And, and, for, and for everyone who's listening and will continue to listen, the, the more we do these, the more you realize I don't like Texas. I respect Texas a great deal. I respect everything they've become. We all do. Because that is just like uh, President Couture said. They carry the brand for the state. Exactly. And my parents went to Texas. So, you know, I have my best friend went to Texas. You know, all these things. My parents are swags. You know, I have friends. Who along the way, et cetera, et cetera, and I, I give them, I give them grief. They give me grief because I went to U of H and my proud U of H school girl graduate. But I, I don't like Texas, so to see them not pick first is a good thing. Yeah, back to uh, the press releases and all that kind of stuff. Okay, yeah. I got my little dig in. <laughs> okay, anything else? Uh, probably so. Okay, I'll get to it in a minute. Okay. Uh, Offensive player of the year, Justin Blackman, Oklahoma State wide receiver. Um, he's a junior. And defense player of the year, Travis Lewis, linebacker, 6'2 from San Antonio. He is a uh, lot more mature this year. He talked about taking responsibility and the uh, upperclassmen taking control of this team and not allowing what happened last year to happen again. Uh, they've got intentions now. They understand where they are and what it means now to get things done on a daily basis. You know, it's not, it, it can't be about talk anymore. Said, and I respect that because this young man last year, he was loving the camera. This year he was more serious about it. It was a lot more for the uh, a responsibility tone in his voice, which told me that Oklahoma's heading in the right direction. Um, it's always good to hear uh, Coach Stoops talk about uh, his team and all. He doesn't have to do a whole lot. He, he lads, you know, he's a lot more comfortable in his, in his situation, but he understands when they put the balls out on the field, guys get in uniform and pass, it's time to go and make some sweat. But I, I got to ask you, why do you pick? The Aggies finished first. Oklahoma was big, I believe, in a lot of polls, number one in in, in the country preseason. Which means it's good for discussion, but doesn't that doesn't and, 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 like, and that's what it boils down to. Uh, the only reason I'm doing this, I, I picked A&M, is because of experience at the quarterback, experience on defense. Uh, experience on offense at the key positions they were able to change in the middle of the stream last season they picked up some games that they didn't Folks didn't think they, they would have. I mean, because you and I went to that when you all you and I went out there for the uh, basketball day. Uh, they were having it was a, what a Monday I think it was, and they were also having football. And had just come off of a loss to Kansas, right? And folks were beating them up that day. That was the last loss that I think they had. I, I think so, yeah. And they, 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 they lost three in a row, I think. Yeah. And Co- uh, Coach Sherman was getting a beat down that day, and it was not pretty and he made a decision to make changes in the middle of the stream and most coaches won't do that not in the guy that they believe in which is what he, he believed in Jared Johnson okay now you picked because Landy Jones is still a quarterback in Oklahoma right right okay yeah he's a, he's a talented young man oh, yeah. all right so you, you voted 
Long Orange after Baylor. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. I found the poll. Uh, Oklahoma 1, Aggies 2, Edging Out, Oklahoma State, Missouri 4, Texas 5, Baylor 6, Texas Tech 7. So you had the Lions out of Texas Tech in your own poll? Yeah. Wow, so that's not like you don't like the Lions either. Well, and then Kansas State 8, Iowa State 9, Kansas 10. It boiled down to two things. One, and I mentioned this the other week. Last a year ago, we went to Dallas. Uh, the guys all he had, the guys all showed up, and they uh, didn't uh, didn't look like they were grown. They were they were ready to take on the task of moving forward. You know, after Coach McCoy, and for whatever reason. The question, well, I'm not. The conversation between Coach Brown and his guys was different than any I had ever watched over the last uh, 45 years, and it was just different. They didn't come in with a, a look or an attitude that, yeah, we're Texas, but we come in. This is business. You know, we we don't have, have a whole lot to say. We got a whole lot to do. Well. Two years in a row, it's been, we got a lot to say, and they had showed me they got a lot to do. Oh, that's, that's fine. You know, because when you come in and make a statement, uh, yes, we're Texas, and we understand we gotta, that we got to earn respect, but still, we're Texas. Fellas, you got work to do. All right. That's enough on the Longhorn. This might turn us into a beat down the Longhorn beat down. podcast. I'm gonna switch shift gears to come to say okay. where no. my Houston Cougars were picked to win uh, the Western Division, and Case Keenum was uh, preseason player of the year. Correct? Yes. Um, Case was a uh, play uh, picked for offensive player of the year. Vinny Carrier Marshall, defensive player of the year. Folks, you got to see this guy at work. He can. He's got a motor. What position does he play? Yeah, it's a uh, linebacker, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, the other kid, uh, which is everybody's heard from on a regular basis, Demaris Johnson out of Tulsa, special teams. 